Hello and welcome to this Construction Qualification Changes presentation for Level 1 Construction Qualifications. I'm Simon McAleese, a Senior Product Developer for NOCN. This presentation has been recorded on the 30th of April 2020. So this Level 1 session, we're going to look at why we are changing our current offer, the revised unit layout we've implemented for these new qualifications, the structure for level one, some examples of what the new unit content looks like, ways in which the new qualifications will be assessed, and the support materials that we have available to aid in the delivery of these qualifications. Why? So first of all, why are we re redeveloping our offer? We have taken this opportunity to carry out a full review of our offer. This is for core trades for now, but we do intend to include other trade areas in this redevelopment in time. We want to standardise the terminology that we've used. We have a clear progression route from level to level and within level, so that's from entry 3 to level 1 to level 2, or from award to certificate to diploma. We've also implemented a new unit design, which I will show you all shortly. This is because the regulated qualifications framework offers us as an awarding body much more flexibility than the old qualification and credit framework which our existing qualifications were written for. We can write and structure our qualifications in a way that makes it clearer what is expected of a learner. We've held some focus groups and shown these new units to a good number of centres now and the response so far has been incredibly positive. We've also looked at how we assess this new unit content. And as it says at the bottom, this does only apply to the core trades for now. Revised unit layout. To the right, we have an example of one of our new units. This one is health and safety in construction. The top half of the example should seem very familiar as it contains the usual standard unit information such as title, aim, level, credits, and guided learning hours. There's also a short description of the assessment method, multiple choice in this case. The learning outcomes will be numbered as they are currently, but instead of having numbered assessment criteria underneath each learning outcome, we have a bulleted delivery content section. This section explains the minimum expectations for each learning outcome. You'll notice that some words in this delivery content section are in bold. These terms have additional detail behind them in a scope of training section at the end of each unit. So this shows you what the end of each unit document looks like. Here we can see the scope of training and assessment for this unit. So this provides further clarity of what exactly is expected from any learner who completes the unit. We also have the terms from the delivery content listed here. In this example, you can see main legislation and standard documentation. Please note terms in bold are expected to be covered as a minimum, but as there are here, there will sometimes be additional bullets in plain text, which can be delivered optionally as a stretch and challenge for your learners. So the new training switch structure. So this diagram shows entry 3, level 1 and level 2's new qualification structure. Going from left to right, entry 3, level 1 to level 2, and bottom to top, awards, certificates, diplomas and extended diplomas. At level 1, we'll be offering a generic award, which is called the Level 1 Award in Construction. This is a knowledge only qualification and there'll be more on that on the following slide. We're also going to offer trade specific qualifications in five core trades, bricklaying, carpentry, painting and decorating, plastering and tiling. There will also be an option for multi-skills. So the level one award in construction. As I mentioned on the previous slide, this is a knowledge only qualification. It's been designed to act as an introduction for learners who want to know more about the construction industry but aren't sure which trade, if any, is for them. 
It consists of the health and safety unit, which is mandatory in all of these qualifications, along with a new <coughs> unit with a comprehensive overview of the construction industry itself. Both units are assessed by a multiple choice test as they are knowledge based, and completing both of these units gains learners the award in construction. The health and safety unit in this qualification as mentioned, is mandatory across the entire suite of level one qualifications. And that unit will cover health risks and hazards, health and safety communication, protective measures, own and employer's responsibilities, and housekeeping and hygiene. For the core trades, all the qualifications will follow a similar pattern at level one. We have chosen bricklaying here just as an example. But generally, where you see the word bricklaying below, replace it with another core trade area. So, for example, where it says skills for bricklaying or further skills for bricklaying, that would be skills for carpentry or further skills for carpentry or plastering, etc. To gain the level one award in bricklaying, learners need to complete two core units. So, the health and safety, which is re recurs across all of the qualifications and also a practical unit which is skills for bricklaying. This unit contains setting out, build basic brickwork structures, work safely and communicate effectively, and clean and store tools, equipment and the work area. Learners will be expected to complete two bricklaying activities to complete this unit. And just to reiter reiterate once more, the other core trade areas will follow the same structure with the same number of activities, but it would be two carpentry activities for carpentry, two plastering activities for plastering, etc. Moving on from the award to the certificate, we can see the same two units from the award, plus a further skills for bricklaying in this example, which would be the third unit which would help learners achieve the level one certificate. This unit is very similar to the skills for bricklaying unit, the only difference being it would be expected to complete two additional tasks in bricklaying. So at award, the learners would complete two tasks for bricklaying, but in the certificate, they would complete two additional tasks, making four tasks in total. And again, this pattern is repeated across the suite for the different trades. Moving on up then to the extended certificate and diploma, larger qualifications again. You basically follow the, the three units that you would complete for the certificate that we've just shown, plus nine additional credits from the optional units shown here. We've included popular and requested content such as environmental awareness, employment in the construction industry, costing a job, personal skills, modern technologies, and one that we seem to be asked for the most recently, personal well-being. The intention with these optional units is to provide learners with a rounded skills and knowledge set. Learners can complete 20 credits from this bank to gain a diploma at level one. Assessment. So the assessment will take several forms. Because they're mainly practical units, has been mainly practical assessment. There will be some portfolio of evidence for knowledge based units, and some of the other knowledge based units will be assessed by multiple choice, health and safety, and the construction industry being two of those. On that note, we have created PowerPoint presentations for the health and safety and construction industry units. These aren't mandatory and they're intended as support material. They help learners prepare for, for their MCQs, and these are editable, so tutors can take ownership of them and adjust them to tailor the learners' needs. Sample practical assessments. For each of the core trades, we've developed a selection of practical tasks to help with delivery of the skills units. These are all set by NOCN and are internally assessed using the existing IQA and EQA processes. We will have 10 short answer knowledge questions at the end of each of these. 
and support materials are being developed for these short answer knowledge questions as we speak. So let's have a look through the sample practical assessments. So here we've got the cover page with the usual details such as fill in the learner's name, assessment start date, location, assessor, etc. Overleaf, we've got the assessment brief, which explains what the task is. The assessment section, which shows exactly what is going to be assessed during the task, including the target time scale. And then on the right hand side, you can see drawings that illustrate the task. These drawings won't, will be familiar to those of you who currently deliver bricklaying. We are uh, working on some new assessments with new drawings as well at the moment. On the next page, we've got the planning sheets, including tools and equipment, materials, and hazards and risks. We've also included marking sheets to ensure that all criteria are met. And again, the 10 short answer questions at the end of each, six of which are shown here, plus a review section with the standard review questions, what went well, areas for improvement, etc. Support material. So we've produced a series of video learning resources for the new construction trades, and these can be used across all three levels, entry three, level one, and level two. These videos can be used as a full class teaching exercise, or they can be used by a VLE as a quick catch up for learners who've missed a class, or even for revision purposes. There, these videos show a wide variety of skills in the different trade areas. We've also created tutor guides and learner assessment booklets for a wide range of units, both mandatory and optional units. These are an additional free of charge resource to aid in the delivery of the qualifications. Rollout. These qualifications will be live from the 1st of August and ready to teach from the 1st of September 2020. They are going to run in parallel with their existing trade qualification offer for the first year. As I mentioned at the start, Level 2 webinars will be coming soon and that will be the middle of May. Thank you very much for your time and for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please contact us using the contact details below.